Welcome, welcome to the Arizona News Show. I'm Rick McComb with EXP Realty with Pat, What's My Rate McMasters, and Jackie Smith with Century 21 Arizona Foothills. And Ruby has, um, she says she's busy today, but I think she just snubbed this. No, she's she's back-to-back clients all day. Yep, yep. And, uh, and then I uh, want to remind everybody that if you hit the like button, uh, Pat will put on sunscreen next time he goes golfing. And... Uh, <laughs> I swear to yeah. God, I, I, um, why is my, I don't know why my face looks like it's, I'm ready to have a heart attack. <laughs> well, we'll see how the show because goes. Because after this know. week, you probably are. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we'll touch on that a little bit because, um, it, this is the second week in a row where things just came up like on the, the last three days. But question for the panel here What part of the valley right now are you seeing that ha- is having the most activity with buyers? And Jackie, I'll start with you. Okay. Um, so I, I'm seeing a lot, anything that's close to that new chip factory. I'm seeing a lot in uh, North Peoria, uh, Anthem, uh, North Phoenix, Northeast Phoenix, anybody that's got close, easy access. Uh, I'm amazed. We just had another client uh, we put in escrow. They got a job there and uh, they bought North Peoria, like 121st Avenue. Um, I'm hearing that the South, I've had some clients reach out to me that the Southeast Valley uh, as well, but the majority, I would say probably 80% of my clients right now are easy access to the chip factory. I would agree. I'm also seeing that in the Southeast Valley because of the exact same reason. If you've seen how much the Chandler Intel plant is expanding, it's mind blowing. Mm-hmm. And then I saw something, uh, something on the news that said, this surprised me the most searched city suburb from people that don't live in Arizona is Sun Lakes. Really? Over 55 community. On Zillow, the most searched. It surpassed Sun City and it surpassed Sun City West and all the over over 55s and it was Sun Lakes. Well, Pat, let me ask you, where are your customers coming from? Is there one area or age group that's different than... What we're seeing? Uh, not really. I'm seeing a mixed bag everywhere, but I, I agree with you guys as far as easy access. You know, people are trying to place, they're willing to drive a little ways, but not get too crazy on where they want, you know, they're, they've got certain segmented areas where they want to live. Like you said, the TS, you know, the Taiwan plant, Intel, Gilbert Chandler, um, you know, they're just trying to seek out areas that they still have some reasonable buying power. And uh, it's, it's kind of all a mixed bag with me because I get it all over. You know, I, I unlike you guys, obviously you've got certain areas that you kind of concentrate in. And it doesn't matter with me as far as where they're at. You can finance anywhere. But it's been, um, I'm, I'm seeing a group of people that, um, you know, the 30 to 35, 38-year-old crowd that, uh, you know, are just tired of renting. And they're just trying to get uh, things aligned in terms of finances to obviously buy you know, I, the people I've been able to get qualified are <clears throat> the ones that don't have the thousand eleven hundred dollar car payment. You know, they both have dual incomes and relatively low debt. You know, so they can sustain a higher house payment because I think the rents have kind of uh, uh, mentally prepared people. They're not going from paying rent. You know, back in the day, they were going paying rent of you know thousand eleven hundred twelve hundred dollars, and then all of a sudden they're bumping up to twenty one hundred dollars. Like, whoa. <laughs> Now they're paying rents of, you know, 2,000, 2,500. And um, the rents have kind of mentally prepared them to pay $2,800, $2,900 for a house. Yep, yep. Rick, there's one other place I'm seeing a lot of activity. So on the 303, there is a ton of industrial going. Yeah. And because of the affordability factor, I'm still getting a lot of Buckeye because you can buy, I mean, you buy a brand new house for, mid to high threes which is crazy and then i'm also seeing litchfield and goodyear as well anything that seems to be off the 303 even that 202 i'm seeing more people down in levine area where i didn't used to get many levine people at all um but that 202 makes such easy access down to it and you don't have to drive through the kind of more downer parts of south phoenix to get there so it's a little bit more appealing it's an interesting market. Let me share some of the numbers. And this is to show you what's going on right now. Um, can we predict 
where it's going in the future looking at this stuff uh not all of it but it's kind of surprising where we're at right now and that is we're looking here and you can see that average list price per square foot has been going up since the first of the year after really plummeting last in 2022 look at that see how it went down got down to a low of $326 a square foot. Now we're sitting here at 365. So that is active. They're asking more. And so you say, well, are they selling them? Well, we're starting to see right here that closings over list price is up to 15.9%, but the majority of those are in the 300 to 400,000 range right here. So you're not seeing closings over list price happening too much in anything above 500,000. There's a few. There's 686, 13% of the market. And if I were to click on it, they would say that the average is uh, oh, see. <clears throat> list price, sales over list. I have to go down here for that price. So 500, 600,000, average of $9,888, and the rest are averaging $5,000. But it's out there. It's not... It's certainly not the, you know, 80% that we were seeing. Listings hey, Rick. Under, yes. Can, can I touch on that real quick? So yeah. that, that listing that we took um, and had in coming soon status, I've got quite a few inquiries on it. And the contract came in 25000 over. I, I honestly don't know if I'm going to make it a price. Yeah. I'm going to do my very best. I, there's a few comps out there that might help, you know, but, and we talked to the clients and said, hey, if anything, we know we're getting top dollar because if it appraises for 510, 515, it's still higher than what you had it listed at. So, yeah, that one was a surprise. So, yeah. And it was a quick surprise. Oh, I knew it was going to happen, actually. Listings under contract are not going down. They're going up. <clears throat> and then finally, we look and say monthly average sales price per square foot. Remember, I showed you list prices, pricings were going up prices. These are kind of flatline, the monthly average sales price. So you might be able to, might slightly be able to make the argument that people are a little more optimistic on the listing side, but the reality is they're not really getting it um, by much. So, well, we'll see what happens. But Pat, um, kind of a snoozer week for rates, despite the fact that CPI uh, came out kind of as expected, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, um, you know, shifted. Give me my screen here. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. I know you're a control freak there. <laughs> control everything. <laughs> but nah, I mean, we've seen. Uh, about this? I'm going to eliminate you all together. Okay. I mean, yeah, it was, it was really, it was per se, a, I mean, a snoozer week, which is good. I mean, um, as you can see here, we've kind of, we've had these trends. Um, this is back, this is December to February and then February to beginning of March. Right now we're seeing this, you know, this rates, this is actually prices, uh, which obviously rate and bond prices are inverted, but this is a price. But so you've seen some stabilization right in here since about uh, <clears throat> March 13th. So about the last month, we've had some good stabilization of rates kind of sitting in this pattern here. And um, I mean, we're what's nice is that we're not seeing those heart attack days where the bond market's down 75, 80 basis points or up 75 or 80 basis points. It was kind of a snoozer with the CPI and the PPI. I mean, the PPI came out, I mean, it decreased a half, you know, five, uh, half 0.5 percent. But obviously these inflation numbers are coming in cooler now and um, everything is coming in a little bit cooler. But the feds, you know, they have said that. Um, they're still <clears throat> trying to put the pedal on the metal or pedal to the floor as far as uh, rates. And I think Barry, basically Barry Habib just does just feels like they are um, just, they still don't get it that they're still out of touch with reality because they're increasing rates. They're, they're probably gonna have another increase of maybe 25 bips. Um, they, there was, I guess the fed, some of the fed guys were talking about having a 50 point increase. But really? Once again, this still goes to show how out of touch they were, uh, you know, have been the last couple of years. And well, the other thing that concerns me, too, is is that, you know, I saw a report this morning that we've hit a one trillion dollar deficit in our spending. Right. 
And yet we collected the second highest amount of revenue ever. So it just goes to show you, it doesn't matter how much money we bring in, the government spends way more than what's coming in. And so, I mean, we've got record revenue coming in and we're at one trillion. That is going to put a lot of pressure on, on rates and on the market and, you know, and making it even harder to get inflation down. But to your point where Barry said the numbers year over year will start improving because like March numbers dropped off, right? Mm -hmm. March was high and then April will drop off. So the, the scenario he laid out for May looks like it's lining up pretty good. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, they, the Fed, he feel, you know, he's saying that the Fed is still you know, locked in on inflation. Um, you know, they said the banking turmoil was here, but uh, inflation was more significant. And uh, <laughs> he just, um, you know, he's saying that obviously the banking situation is going to tighten up on the bank on the lending, which is going to slow things down a little bit further. But we haven't seen that yet. It's going to it's it's coming. You know, he was saying, too, about this one, the one Fed uh, lady, uh, I think it was Mary Daly. You know, she was talking out of both sides of her mouth. She basically said she, you know, uh, she wants to hike rates again. But then she said she appears, you know, it appears that inflation is coming down on its own and that the banking crisis will definitely help. So, like you said, once again, it just shows how these guys are just saying this, doing that. There's no, no uniformity whatsoever. Hey, we screwed up the banks. That'll lower inflation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway. Hey, hey, let's mess with housing now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it's all in um, favor, say I. <laughs> but the bonds, you know, the bonds, as you can see, you know, the bond market, go back to that chart, it's kind of it just absorbed, it's absorbing this news. We're not having these like the like here. This we had a great day there. Um, you know, there's you get these big spikes, these big long candles. That's when we have some crazy days, but we're kind of consolidating in here, you know, in this, they have moderated, which the news, the market's kind of taking this news now. Um, the shock of it seems to be coming out of it. We're not having, yeah. like I said, these crazy days where it's down 70 basis points, up 70 basis points. It's kind of, we're kind of going into this new trend now of, okay, here we are. So, you know, the next move is, I mean, I, I think Barry's on to something. He goes, inflation is moderating. And, you know, I think we did hit a peak here, you know, in the past. Well, there's, you know, there's definitely a lot of clouds looming out there. But Jackie, man, what a difference between last month and this month. Crazy. I mean, you're busier than crate. Like, oh, my um, gosh. You're I, they're, they're, people are literally coming out of the woodwork. Even people that I, I. You know, I stay try to stay in touch with clients that um, even a couple of years ago that just decided to put things on hold and they were company generated. So, you know, they just kind of sit there in the queue and they get little notifications and touches every once in a while. And I had like seven or eight of them that just popped up out of nowhere that I didn't expect they were even going to be ready until after summer. Yeah. And they're like, nope, we're ready to go. And I'm like, OK, so I think people are more. They, they feel that stability and they're starting to feel more comfortable because there's not such mm -hmm. big, huge highs and lows and swings. Even myself, I used to check the mortgage rates like, I don't know, eight, nine times a day. I'm checking like once or twice now and I'm like, oh, still the stay, same. Stay in your own lane, okay? Please stay in your I, own lane. <laughs> <laughs> You'll lose your dollar. <laughs> Please stay in your own I'm lane. I'm just going to write on Pat's tail coat again there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it's I'm seeing the same thing. I, I, and I think and I was explaining to some, um, you know, some buyers yesterday. I said, here's here's the kicker that I see right now. And I've mentioned this a few times. The average person that really isn't following the market closely um, thinks it's bad. Yeah. And so sellers are like, well, I'm not going to list now because I hear it's really slow. And it is. It's slow compared to the volumes that we saw in 21 and 22, no doubt about it. And then you got buyers going, well, there's no way I'm offering them their list price because things are really slow and they are, but, uh, but, but they're much better than what people think. Um, and I think Pat's connection is slow. He's, uh, well, he's dropped off there for a moment. So. And Rick, I've noticed a difference with though, with that though, in the last few weeks, 
where people see, and I'm, I'm asking people, where, where are you getting caught up with the times? Because you're right. When I was having conversations with people uh, three, four weeks ago, they thought the market was completely different. And suddenly this new batch of people that are arising, they're, they're in tune to what's happening and they feel positive about the market. And I, I've even asked a couple of them, where are you getting your information? So I, I don't know. Well, the news the news lags. I mean, it always takes two to three months to, for yeah. people to finally see what's what's going on with the numbers. And I think we're seeing some of that. And it looks like Pat is probably going to have to log back in. So he's a slave to the internet um, gremlins well, that are out he, there. He figured since Ruby wasn't here to pop in and out, he had to do it. That's right. We got to keep yeah. the style of the show going. So. <laughs> <laughs> now, speaking of that, have you got your... Rick Kelp's 1 million views notebook yet? I have not. I heard it's on back order. Yes. Uh, well, it, it finally <laughs> showed up. So now, how do you get this coveted? Uh, tell me, tell me. Blank, blank notebook. Um, all you have to do is subscribe to my newsletter and the link's down below, and I'll automatically enter you into drawing. And I'm going to give a bunch of these away. And rumor has it that Pat's going to give away the ever so coveted price mortgage jacket. Now, I must ask that important question. What if you're already subscribed to new, your, your newsletter? You are in the drawing. Awesome. I'm excited. In the drawing. Now, it looks like I'm, now this is not 1 million subscribers. This is 1 million views, okay? So it looks like I'm going to hit that in a few days. That's awesome. So we need to have a special show. 8,000 8, views to go. So we're going to get that done. So I'll be in a million views right before I bug out of town. So, and- I want, meant to touch on this, Jackie, and look at this. I mean, there's no relief in, in listings. It's crazy. They're not showing up. And, you know, now we're down to 2020 levels. And, of course, you know, rates, I mean, listings started falling off here simply because that's when the pandemic was starting. But right. that's the only other time that we saw listings. I mean, I don't want to say the only other time. I mean, we got down to here. Look at that. And this was last year 2022 so listings climbed up here this is when rates went up right here yeah yeah and then they kind of started tapering off the people said oops rates are up i better i better get rid of this house now while i still have the equity because we all know the end is near so uh it's gonna it be scares an, an me time. it scares me because if we drop down and we stay in those high fives i mean we keep touching it's like we keep teasing with it and then we bounce up back up a little bit. But if we get back down into those fives and we're not building up the inventory, I just don't want to see the market go crazy again. I, I, I like just don't want to see it. I'd like to see us in the fives with about 18,000 listings. That would be amazing. That would be yes, absolutely that's, fantastic. That's a level market. That's where if I could flip a switch and say, okay, um, Rick's going to change Arizona real estate. Here's <laughs> what I'm going to do. I'm going to make rates 5.5. And I'm going to have a minimum of 18,000 listings. Go talk amongst yourselves. So <laughs> you know, that's, that's what that I would be. That would be perfect. <laughs> that would be perfect. Make it happen, Rick. Okay. Yeah. There's probably a button <laughs> on here somewhere. Well, look, thanks for joining us again, Jackie. And I will uh, give Pat a call and see if he's okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he had a rough week. Hopefully he didn't just pass out and fall off the chair. He, he did. I mean, we, you know, last week. <laughs> Um, you know, he looked considerably older on this show than he did last <laughs> week because, you know, last week I had one that, you know, started bubbling down like at the last minute. And I think, uh, um, you know, with some last minute issues and then uh, and it closed. And then he's got one that was supposed to close on Monday. And the client, this is a lesson for everybody. The client moved a bunch of money to pay his taxes and that underwriter underwriters go back in and they see this stuff. They look, they look at the file. Okay. It says here he's got, and I'll make up the number 300,000 in this account. And they look and go, wait, he's only got 260,000. What happened? And so he moved this. So the underwriters got all wigged out as you're keenly aware of Jackie. And, but it shows you that there's always something that comes up last year. Some people go out and buy a new car. Oh yeah. Now they can't get the loan. Um, you find out, Hey, I had one wait, you, you're on this car loan that you never shared that with. Oh, that's because my son makes the payment. No, but the loan's in your name. Right. Right. Here's the under, thing with that. Underwriter found it. <laughs> yeah. Here's that thing with the, the tax one though, is that the underwriter 
that client, it's my client. It's our client. Yeah. Um, he has multiple accounts. And so the core citing of the time of when the underwriter decided we're going to specifically use this account for your qualification, he, th he always pays his taxes out of a specific account. Well, they notified him they were going to use that specific account two days after he had paid his taxes. So it, there was just, it, I don't think there was any way to eliminate that problem from happening on either side. It just, it's one of those things that happened, but it's getting resolved. Pat's getting yeah, it resolved. And it, yeah. And Pat, Pat put it together and saved it. But I think, you know, it, but it shows you that, uh, you know, the job of the underwriters is to make sure the loan is solid because once the loan gets packaged, they sell it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they don't want it to come back. And if it comes back, it hits, it ends up on their book. So they don't want to sell a loan and then later find out that there was something wrong or you missed something because they'll, they'll make you buy it back. So underwriters are looking for any red flags that may make this loan toxic. And right. they're looking at it even more so this year than they were last year. And oh, yeah, so for this sure. Was, this was just a classic example of the yeah. detail that people need to be prepared for with under share everything with your lender so that you don't have this 72 hour. You know, thankfully, nobody's got a moving truck pulled up to the house, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, that's why scheduling and closing on a Friday uh, can be dangerous. Never. Because you have something come up and you go, oh, well, we can't do anything till Monday. But my mover's going to be here in the morning. Sorry. That's right. Uh, you know, there's nothing we can do about it. It's it's tough. And you can't give anybody a pre-possession agreement. Say, I want to buy your house, but something's going on with the loan. Well, Jackie, can I go ahead and move in Saturday? It's dangerous. Anyway? Because, yeah. you know, no, you can't. It's not your house. So. Um, lots of things to watch out for, and we will keep you up to speed here on this show. Do me a favor, smash the like button. Don't forget to get our newsletter. And Jackie, have a fabulous day. Thanks. Bye-bye, guys. See ya.